Hi everyone, I'm happy to announce we released our new auto analyzer, which is available from the version 5.1. Today, I would like to tell you some details about our improvements in the analyzer. Let me introduce myself. My name is Maria Ivanina. I work as a data scientist at FM Systems. I'm implementing new enhancements in the analyzer as a part of report portal team. At first, I would like to remind you the details in the last analysis process in the port portal below 5.0. Our analysis strongly depends on the user assignments of defect types. As far as it represents the train set and the source of knowledge for future well test items. So the whole process can be divided into two parts, creating the train set and auto analysis process. So when the user assigns a defect type to the test item, we take logs from them, pre-process and save in Elasticsearch in a convenient for search form. When a new fail test items appear, we try to search similar test items to them in the Elasticsearch and choose the most relevant one by the KNN algorithm. Log text cleaning involves removing stop words, numbers, starting date times. The text is lowercase. After that, we search the logs in the Elasticsearch and they are characterized by TF-IDF vectors. So TF means term frequency, whereas IDF states for inverted document frequency. This helps to reweight the words and the meaning in the text in a more appropriate way. When a new to investigate test item appears, we clip the log lines by user defined quantity and try to find similar ones. The Elasticsearch results are regrouped by the defect type. And after that, the defect type with maximum representatives will be used as result. For example, here, We've chosen the product box as, as far as it has two representatives. So we are ready to move on to our new 5.1 report portal auto analyzer. The blocks in red are either added or replaced, and we are going to see them in a more detail. So like log text extraction now contains widen detected message and stack trace. We would like to have an opportunity to work with them separately. We're still removing stop words, starting date times, and numbers in the stack trace. But we would like not to lose information about the numbers in the detected message. So we are saving them separately. We've understood that not all logs are equally important. That's why we reweight the, the log information and merge some of them. So we merge one, two log line messages in the one, in one log and leave meaningful big logs. And this helps to reweight them in decision making. We've extended our Elasticsearch queries. The main constraints for us stay the same. We still need log message similarity to be more than the threshold set by our users. But we also try to boost our final Elasticsearch score with additional scores. So they are not compulsory, but we, they will add some more in the relevance in, for Elasticsearch. So for example, we can add match in detected message or in numbers for detected message or stack trace and they will help us to find more relevant results. When we get the Elasticsearch results, we regroup them by the defic type. Each group is characterized by the most relevant item with maximum score within the group. After that, we calculate miscellaneous statistics and similarities for each group. All of them are 17 features, which are the input for our machine learning model gradient boosting. 
this model was trained to predict whether the group is relevant for our query test item or not. The model gives the probability for each group and the group with maximum probability will be chosen. The group with probability less than 0.5 won't be considered as irrelevant at all. So in our case, the product bug group has a probability 0.87, and that's why we've chosen it as a group for our query test item. So this is all about the analysis process, and we could have entered right here with applauses. But you could have posed questions. Why did we decide to change anything, and whether our changes were worth doing? So I will try to explain the metrics we are using in a few words. So the task was a classification for our manually assigned defect types. That's why we are uh, both involved both precision and recall. And it's a convenient way to measure the accuracy and uh, quality of our model with F1 measure, as it is a harmonic mean of these metrics. We also use accuracy metric for easier understanding and explainability. So what numbers do we have for our old and new analyzer? So the blue line is represented by the uh, analyzer 5.0, whereas the orange line stays for the new analyzer. You can see the increasing trend. So the more data you have, the better accuracy is. We've evaluated uh, on average for 13 projects data improvements for analyzer plus 21%. I'll zoom in one of the plots so that you could see it in a more detail. On the y-axis, you can see the metrics value. On the x-axis, the training dataset size. So our metrics are shown in dependence with the training dataset size. If you pay attention to the training dataset size below 500 test items, we have much better results for the new analyzer in comparison with the old one. So it proves that the co-star problem is resolved much better in the new analyzer. And the more test items we have in the train set, the better results are. We also have fewer false positive results, but at the same time, we have bigger percent of not found items. But it is the, the problem of trade-off between the precision and recall. Now it's high time we took a quick demo of the autoanalysis functionality. We will show you three cases so that you could understand how our changes influence the autoanalysis process. In the first case, we would like to use information from the stack trace to find more relevant results in the autoanalysis when the constraint is to have 90% in the first two log lines. For this test item, we have two similar results, where two results have 100% match in the first two log lines, but one which has the name more similar has the same test method in the stack trace, whereas less similar has another test method in the stack trace. We are going to assign a defect type product bug to the first one, which is less similar, and the one which is more similar, we are going to make an automation bug. And now we would like to run the autoanalysis to find how it will work in this situation. For us, we would like to, to find more relevant result which has the same me test method in the stack trace. We are going to run only for the, this current launch. And what we can see, our autoanalyzer connected our query test item with more similar one and assigned an automation bug. The next case will be about reweights and small and big logs. This test item has two logs, one a session error with stack trace and another one which is a small, short and less meaningful config fact. We can find one similar result with the same small log, but as we can see, we have a completely different SQL exception here. That's why we can say these two test items have the same reason to fail. That's why we wouldn't like to connect them. 
Now we've assigned system issue to this test case and we're going to run until analysis to check whether it will find this connection or not. As you can see, nothing has changed and that's why we didn't make this error and didn't the find case false false about result. incorporating information about numbers in the detected message. In this test item we see status code 409 and we have similar test items with 90% of match but two of them have 513 status code and one of them has the same status code 409. They have this similar relevant score but we would like to have a more relevant result with this status code and now we will check this. For ones that have another stat code we will assign automation bug defect type whereas for the one which has a similar stat code we're going to make it a product bug. And now we have three test items with defect types and we are going to run analysis to check how it will work in this situation. As far as you can see, our analyzer assigned to the query test item a product bug defect type, so it found a relevance by similar stat code. Let's summarize what we've discussed today. We've used a more sophisticated machine learning algorithm, Gradient Boosting Freeze. We're trying to extract new information from the logs. And the main benefit for you, our users, that you can start using our auto analysis just right away, even with few manually assigned defect categorizations. If you have any question, please join report portal on the Slack, follow up our Twitter, stay tuned and be healthy.